Good morning, everyone. It is 8 o'clock on the dot on this Sunday morning. Many of you have been with us for almost 48 hours now. Wow. I hope you all have your coffee or other caffeinated alternative this morning. And welcome to the last day of our virtual empowerment weekend. My name is Brandon Kinsey and I will be your facilitator for this session. Before we begin, let's go over a few important housekeeping items first. You are muted now and will remain muted until our presenter asks otherwise or finishes speaking. Your videos are on for some of you. You may keep them on, but please remember we can see you. And if you don't want that, you can go ahead and turn those off. At the end of the session, I will paste an evaluation form link in the chat window. This will include the opportunity to ask any additional questions or request a copy of the presentation from your presenter. And you can include your email address there. So please do so if you want to get any additional information from our presenter today. Our presenter today, Marlene Smith, is a retired family physician, now teaching nut nutrition at a graduate school level. As a Toastmaster, she has completed two pathways and sharing with us today her DTM project, Educational Moments for Toastmasters and Beyond. Marlene has compiled her pearls about public speaking into picture quotes. As a Toastmaster and an educator, she hopes that you will incorporate educational moments into your club's weekly agenda. Please help me welcome, bright and early on this Sunday morning, Marlene Wolf Smith. Thank you. And we'll start this with our share screen. And welcome this Sunday morning, fellow Toastmasters and honored guests and dignitaries. Educational moments for Toastmasters and beyond. Who has ever heard of an educational moment or moment of education? It took me two years to hear of this. And you may say, what is it? What is an educational moment? An educational moment is a short, relative, positive, memorable message. Moment of education, or as I recently learned, called a tip master. I've seen it given last year at another club by a board or officer, and it's one to two minutes of a short positive message at the end of the agenda. Most recently, I gave a short version of this presentation to South Dakota. And in South Dakota, as they're starting their agenda and going down, they had a tip master. I didn't even have to sell this product they had already incorporated it into their agenda. When I was thinking about all of this, I became a coach and a mentor for two different clubs down here in South Florida. One is Sailfish, where I'm a coach, and Modernizing Medicine, where I am a mentor. I brought this moment of education or mode to their agenda and it was up to me to find that moment. I realize that educational moments occur all of the time. We see them all of the time. We just have to be alert enough to share them. These teachable moments, hopefully to reachable audiences. I started keeping a list and from that list grew the educational moments for Toastmasters and beyond my DTM project. This project is composed of a baker's dozen or 13 different types of information or slides that I hope you will use to bring back to your club and start an educational moment on the agenda. We'll start with the first slide. This is a photograph that I took at the Country Music Hall of Fame a museum. My first slide about is about being a wordsmith. After all, Toastmasters, that's what we are. 
we are a wordsmith person. We're told what not to say, the ums and the ohs. The grammarian brings language. But what words do I usually use that I find very beneficial? The first one is a warm welcome. A warm welcome to all of my Toastmasters this Sunday morning in June. I love that word, warm welcome. In fact, as the district timer, I use that. They said, Marlene, say something as a timer so the contestants can identify you. I used warm welcome from the timer. And several days later, a fellow Toastmaster said, I remember you, Marlene. You said warm welcome. Yes, more than one syllable and could be identified. I love the word review. As an educator, I love to use that word. When you talk to an audience and you say review, they know exactly what's happening. Those that know the subject say, oh, it's going to be a review. And those that don't pay a little bit more attention. To summarize and in conclusion, we know where they go. They change the tone, the emphasis of your speech. My rendition is a great way of saying, this is my opinion, but it sounds a little bit softer. I love always good perspective, and who doesn't love to hear thank you? A couple of years ago, I was invited and gave a Toastmaster speech down at Nova University to the School of Pharmacy. This was a live on ground, and there were about 100 pharmacy students faculties and professors there. I ended it with thanks. I said, who likes to hear thank you? All of the hands went up. That's what we should say. Thank you for being in attendance this morning. Everybody feels great with that word. Other half of my slides have to do with the drawings, caricature drawings from a personal friend and artist, the late Thornton Ootz. This happens to be a self-portrait. Thornton, last century, was with Norman Rockwell, and he drew many of the Saturday Evening Post covers. He then went on to be a more famous illustrator, sculptor, carpenter, and portrait painter. He even drew the portrait of Princess Grace and President Carter. He was a personal friend in the family. When I was doing this project, I said, I've seen this before. Where have I seen this? And I pulled out all of those Thornton Oots drawings. In the 1980s and 90s, his public relations was that he drew one of these caricature drawings with a great saying on it once a month. And then his wife would put it in an envelope actually had to lick the stamp. There was no self-sticking stamps and lick the envelope and snail mail it out. And we were honored to receive these things. So I pulled them up. What was Thornton saying to us in 1989? There is nothing wrong with changing your mind, but that doesn't mean the new one will work any better. Thornton, you're talking to us now. Because in public speaking, it does involve trying new angles, including humor, including these picture quotes, including a moment of education. Here is another photograph that I took from St. Louis, Missouri. Out of the top of the window of the hotel, reflecting down on a park. Reflect and use words, pauses, timing, emphasis, humor to elevate your speech. Now, fellow Toastmasters, you may think, I can't do this all at once. I agree. Take one at a time. Practice one thing at a time and see where it lands you. I'm also a moderator for a medical education company. And prior to Papa Pandemic's visit, I would travel around the country, and this is one of the places. 
not only did I have to go on stage and introduce people, but I got to listen. Listen to the speakers, talk to them afterwards, find out about how they engage the audience. And it was always the same. Words, pauses, timing, emphasis, and humor was the key to that engagement. Thornton is talking to us again. Here we are in South Florida, Bahamas, and beyond, wherever you are, fellow Toastmasters. We love the beach. We love the sound of the rhythmic sound of water. And Thornton says to us, more than your feet get a lift with the morning tide, your mind may mend momentarily. And what does Thornton put next to those words? But music, music, what are songs but words to music? The rhythmic music of the tide helps to clear our mind. And when we have a clear mind, we need to speak slowly, because a clear mind does speak slowly. Enunciate with clarity of words and those pauses to connect with the audience. This is another photo of mine that's actually quite funny when I look at it. Here I was at the Norton Art Gallery before Papa pandemic. And I took a picture of this painting. So here we're seeing a picture of a painting of somebody painting a painting with paintings on the walls and the ceilings. So what happens in this painting? Look at the details. Because with our speech, we paint a picture. A paint a picture with descriptive words just like someone that's writing. You can picture the sunset, the yellow sunset, or it can be golden with beautiful rays going through the clouds as the sun is setting. Paint a picture with descriptive words, reinforcing your message. Yes, fellow Toastmasters, this may be a summary of what we need to say. This is my rendition of our words and speeches. To review, what do we do when we see somebody? Look at what Thornton is telling us. Look at the details of this. There's eye contact, there's a greeting and a smile. That indeed is how we start our conversations how we start things, and we give a great first impression. That's very important. In teaching, I also teach about healthcare communication. With healthcare communication, I say, always introduce yourself with a greeting and a smile and eye contact. And how many seconds, not minutes, how many seconds does it take to give a great first impression. The students would all answer, well, it's under 10 seconds, about seven seconds. So I had seven seconds to give you a great first impression so that you would stay here and watch. And I hope I did a great first impression. And what just Thornton said, hard work, is often the easy work we didn't do at the right time. I'm a foodie and nutritionist and a home cook. The other day I was making blueberry pie on the stove, thickening up the fresh blueberries and a couple of spots on the stove. I was tired, didn't wipe up the stove. The next day went to cook something and boy, they got burnt on. As I'm scrubbing the stove with these burnt on blueberry spots, I said to myself, Thornton, you're right. Hard work is often the easy work we didn't do at the right time. This is a picture from one of our travels to the Grand Canyon, the North Rim. Look at the color, the details, the depth of the Grand Canyon. This reminds me of the settings and the character of a story. Here it's a different setting. 
Here, there could be different characters. We can change the setting and characters of a story, but we cannot change the data. Does that sound familiar? When I first was a Toastmaster and joined Outspoken Toastmasters in Coral Springs, I was still working as a moderator and a very funny incident, a play on words happened. But I didn't want to turn it into a story because I didn't want to upset where I was working. And I went to somebody that you all know, Matt Kinsey, and I told him the situation. And Matt gave me this very sage advice. He said, Marlene, you can change the setting and the characters, but you can't change the data. And indeed I did. I changed the settings, I changed the characters. The key phrase was the same and the moral was the same. And it was a great story. I protected the innocent and shared the moral. Here we are back with Thornton again. Thornton knew about feedback and evaluations. For even last century, he said, the surest way to lose a friend is to tell him something for his own good. Look at the faces on those cats. Someone is, are they reachable? Are they listening? Is it really a teachable moment? I don't think so. The best feedback and evaluations are those that are requested. That I feel is the beauty of Toastmasters. When you go in that door, you say, yes, I'm going to be evaluated and I'm open to feedback. When it comes to evaluations, I use the separate the speech from the speaker version. In fact, I was just at the Modernizing Medicine and we were talking about evaluations. And they said, well, and this was my moment of education. I said, I like to separate the speaker from the speech. This speech will be more impactful. This speech could be better evaluated. And they always told to me, wow, Marlene, that's a great idea. Because at this club, we are all friends. We are coworkers. And we find it very difficult to give true evaluation to our friends and coworkers. But when you separate this speech from the speaker, you can give a better evaluation. And when the person that was a speaker understands that, they will be open to the feedback and evaluations that are so vital in Toastmasters. And I implore you, please fill out my evaluation because I'm open to all suggestions. Here we are back again. This is a great perspective of the essentials. Here is what Thornton drew. But look at the details of the duck's face. Is there a smile there? Is there eye contact? Is there good posture? What did he say? Behave like a duck. Be calm and unruffled on the surface, but pedal like the devil underneath. We all get that way. Those butterflies in our stomachs before we have to talk, but we need to smile. Maintain good body language and nod. Not just as a speaker, but Thornton is also talking about the audience. These are the essentials for the audience, especially on the virtual arena. When we're looking at faces and there's not a lot of body language, we wanna see smiles and we wanna see nods. We have that ah uh, counter in Toastmasters. Like I had mentioned the evaluators and the evaluations, what does the ah uh counter do? The ah uh counter checks our stumbles. The ah uh counter checks our double starts. The ah uh counter tells us it's okay to stumble because everybody does. No apologies and continue with a smile. Many a times I've started a speech and I write all my speeches down 
and I'm going through it. And all of a sudden I realized I went and just jumped to the third main subject and I forgot number two. I made a stumble. Don't apologize to the audience. They don't know that you made that stumble. Just go forward. And if you do stumble, a pause and continue with a smile. Because as Thornton is telling us in 1993, don't give up with a stumble. A stumble may prevent a fall. It just gives us time to reflect and go forward. All the world's a stage, a famous Shakespeare line. This is my photo of the Utah Shakespeare Festival in Cedar Bay, Utah, where I was fortunate enough to watch the Merry Wives of Falstaff under a beautiful starlit summer sky in Utah several years ago. It was a precious moment. We all go on stage. All the world is our stage. But my words of advice, become familiar with the stage before starting the speech and then own it. Check your audio like we did this morning, your video. Go look when you're live at the wires, the feedback from the microphone. I gave a community lecture last year about brain health and food and nutrition for the brain. I thought I had everything checked. Check the speaker, no feedback, microphone was working. And then I go to talk to a room full of 100 people or so. Before I started, I noticed that there were some tables where they couldn't see the screen. I had them to move the tables. I got everything. As I started speaking, screech, screech, feedback from the microphone. I moved up two feet, no feedback. I moved back, feedback from the microphone. Well, it turned out that I had to move up two feet to give the speech, but I couldn't see my screen. I couldn't see my PowerPoint on my computer, and I had to turn, which I don't like to do, turn it back to the audience periodically. That won't happen to me again. And then own the stage. Own it. One of my first duties as a Toastmaster several years ago is I was called up for table topics. I was scared. I went up, quietly shuffling up there, did my table topics and shuffled back. A fellow Toastmaster, who we may know, Zaris said to me, Marlene, Stand up straight, walk with confidence, own the stage. She was right. If I felt confident walking up there and own the stage, the audience knew who was in control and the words would flow. Own the stage, fellow Toastmasters, you deserve it. Here is another picture from the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum in Nashville, Tennessee. This is a picture of all of those records. People do remember records. Maybe they are CDs. They are CDs that are very memorable. I use the songwriter's method. I saw a documentary about the songwriter's method. Easy, memorable message or phrase where the opening matches the closing. I thought of the song Help, that classic song by the Beatles. When help, how many times is that word help in that song? I actually pulled up the lyrics and counted over 15 times did the Beatles sing the word help in that song. An easy, memorable message woven through the entire song. A songwriter's method, something that we all can learn from. And they always match the opening with the closing. This is another photo of the winner circle. We're all winners, every one of us. This is from the Churchill Downs in Louisville, Kentucky. We will need to enter every event to win. 
as Toastmasters and as people were prepared, engage, become educated, to be empowered. Engage, educate, and empower. This is my personal mission statement, my vision that actually Toastmasters asked me for in one of my pathways. What is your vision or mission statement? Write it out and write a speech. I will. I've never done this. I'm like, uh uh, years old, and I've never thought of this. It was a great exercise. Engage, educate, and empower. This is what we do every day. And enjoy. Here we are again, Thornton. Thornton is talking about opening our minds. Some people, some minds are like concrete, all mixed and permanently set. We need to listen intently. Part of the skills we learn as a Toastmaster is our listening skills. Mindful listening, paying attention, comprehending, really understanding the other person. This reminds me of a story about the talking stick. To review, the talking stick is a Native American communication tool. It was actually a stick that the council chief would bring to the council meeting, the Native American times, and it's still used today. The person that had the talking stick had the right to express their opinion, their sacred point of view. Everybody else in the council had to listen intently, listen mindfully, listen to that point of view. And then when the chief was done with the talking stick, he would hand it over to the next person. And then everybody, including the chief, had to listen intently to the point of view. They all had to approach the council meeting with an open mind. And at the end, they would all address the next step. The talking stick was used by the Native Americans for meetings even with their enemies and in teaching the children to listen intently and to have the ability to share your point of view and accept somebody else's point of view. The next step. Yesterday, I gave a speech, a talk about nutrition to the faculty of the American Chiropractic Association about using communication styles in nutrition. And we talked about teachable moments. But more than teachable moments, there's reachable moments. So a teachable moment, somebody has to have an open mind and be reachable. So I hope you are a reachable person for this teachable moment. And we'll put these educational moments for Toastmasters and beyond into your agenda. This project has been dedicated to the memory of Thornton Oots, his wife Maud, and Randy Tucker Smith. And this is a beautiful example of a portrait that Thornton drew of Randy Tucker Smith. He would get mad sometimes, Maud say, the people that he did the portraits, they didn't like the background. He would say, the background is my art. I put the faces there. A little bit more about the artist Thornton. Yes, he did the Saturday Evening Post covers, and this is a reference that you can have. And he, similar to me, liked to relate to people, and he related through his artwork. A wonderful person, and we were honored to have him in our family. And last but not least, and not quite last actually, is the photography. I love to share my photography and the stories behind my photos with you. And this is a picture of my family of orchids in my backyard that are blooming and saying, thank you for being a great audience today. 
A sincere thanks and acknowledgments to Rosler and Gordon for the support of this sub project to engage, educate, and empower Toastmasters and beyond. I'm available for any suggestions, comments, and more tips. Please fill out your evaluation form, and I'd love to send you this presentation. Thank you, Brandon, for the introduction, and back to you for the question and answer session. Thank you, Marlene. Let's give her a round of applause, everybody. Now, do we have any questions for Marlene? Because we do still have a few minutes here. I'm gonna go ahead, it's a small enough group right now. You can unmute yourselves and ask your questions, or you can drop them in the chat and we will ask them if you have any questions for Marlene. Hello there. Yes, I do. Are you able to hear me correctly? Yes, we yes, can. I can. All right. Hello there. This is uh, Cameron here. Marlene, the question I had was if it's possible, if you could be able to elaborate a little bit more about separating the speech from the speaker. I had a difficult time understanding myself. So I was wondering if you could be able to elaborate a little bit more on that. Yes, it'd be my honor. It's especially hard when you're giving an evaluation to not say, you should do this and you should do that. I've heard evaluations given when someone say, you, Mr. A or Mrs. B, you A should have spoken louder, put your hands up more. It feels intimidating. It feels like you want to crawl underneath as a speaker because you just didn't do what you wanted to do. But the same thing, let's take an example. You should have used your vocal variety more. That's one way of telling somebody that they didn't use their vocal variety. The other way is this speech would have been more impactful if, you had if the voice would have changed with each character. So here we are critiquing the speech, not telling the speaker how to speak. And I find that that's very important in evaluations and feedback, because then you're not quote unquote attacking the person, you're looking at the product. It's the same way in what I feel in raising the child. You don't say to the child, that's not good. You say the behavior was not acceptable. Does that answer your question and the elaboration enough? So what you're saying is, and if I may clarify, it's more of it's more of when it comes to giving evaluations, it's more of talking about the delivery of the content and as well as more so giving recommendations. Is that is that what you're getting at? Yes. It's the delivery of the content of the speech and separating the vocal variety, separating that out from the speaker. So if you take the you out of it and you just put into the delivery, the recognition, the impactfulness of the story of the message would have been more impactful. So yes, that's a good way of, those are good words, a wordsmith word, the delivery. You're doing a more impactful delivery of the speech and peep, everybody can understand that. And it's not so personal and intimidating and frightening that way. Does that make sense to you? It could be just early in the morning for me, but maybe in due time it will. <laughs> okay, well, it, it'd be just think about when you, if a child or somebody does something, are you going to tell you didn't do that or that? behavior is not acceptable it's the same type of thing is talking okay. about the behavior and the delivery not the person doing the delivery don't beat up the
the person that delivered the message. Oh, okay, okay, I get what you're saying. Got it, got it now. Got it? Good. I'm glad my words finally made it. If I could Somebody, provide a counter example there to help you out, Marlene. Go ahead. I've got some people in my club I absolutely love. And I don't let that affect my evaluation when I have to tell them, hey, that speech just didn't work. So it's it goes the opposite way as well with not conflating positives onto a speech that needs work and not conflating a negative speech onto the person behind it. That's just a different way to think about it. Maybe that helps Cameron, I don't know. The other thing I'd, I'd like to address, somebody put into the chat about the talking stick, the Native American communication tool. And I've used this in several speeches and I've used it last year. I gave a speech at the spring conference at Toastmaster District 48 and I used the talking stick. And, it's, and I actually have one that I made up. And it's a very effective way of explaining communication. And I'm glad that people recognize that they like that and that they are going to use it in their communications. Any other questions or comments? Marlene, hi. Uh, this is Shelley Mannon. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Marlene. An Good excellent morning. presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, we at Art of Speaking Hollywood are online. We meet every 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 week. We're usually about 10 to 15 people, which is a good going uh, during these uh, uh, issues and circumstances. And we had some very, very difficult issues uh, that we were dealing with uh, uh, during um, the, uh, uh, the uh, the difficult period uh, with uh, uh, the, the riots going on. And I think the talking stick would have helped us all listen uh, to each other. Uh, we decided that we would uh, instead take a break for a week, uh, internalize uh, and uh, recamp uh, a week later, which we are going to do next week. And that's why it became for me really uh, necessary to have this listening stick in my club so we can better listen, be better listeners and address everybody's uh, deeper emotional needs uh, that we have to deal from day to day. Thank you very much for that. Yes, it's, it's unfortunate, fortunate or unfortunate, the, there are silver linings in the visit from Papa Pandemic. That's what I call it. I think it would be a great children's storybook, Papa Pandemic Comes to Visit. And there are silver linings. And maybe the silver lining is we need to listen a little bit more intently, maybe one of them. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I know it's early, but if anybody else has any questions here, if you're all awake out there. I'd like to tell another story, Brandon. Go ahead, Marlene. have a couple you minutes. Got, you got 10 minutes. I am, I am the speaker. When I started this project of educational moments, I realized, and actually just most recently when I ended it, I realized that this is my communication style. As a retired physician in the exam room in the office, I had to take a complicated medical problem and I had to deliver it so that the patient would understand. So I would always explain it. We have a pizza pie with filled with all of the veggies and meat. Now we have to take a slice of the pie and then we have to take one bite to digest it at a time. And these educational moments or moments of education are one little bite of how, we, how I perceive public speaking and public speaking tips. And one little bite at a time will all add up to a slice and then when we take the slices all together, then we will understand and be able to digest the entire pie. So if we think of it as a little pizza pie, every little word is a bite, 
we can all make it. And that's how I explained complicated medical devices to patients in the health literacy language, a little bit at a time. Don't get yourself overwhelmed, one little step at a time. And that's been my successful approach in this DTM project and in my Toastmaster journey. Back to you, Brandon. Thank you. I have a quick question for Marlene. Go ahead, Hugh. So this is your DTM project. How close are you to finishing the DTM? Is this the last project? This presentation was a major part of the project. This presentation, along with the video from this, will be sent to Toastmasters International Magazine, hopefully for publication. And from after my submission, I give my final speech. I've given short versions of this speech to about eight different clubs in preparation for today. And I am available to give a short version of this speech to any of your clubs. So yes, I'm very, very close, but it's been a wonderful project because it's personally satisfying to me to share my communication styles, my photographs, and the words of wisdom from Uncle Thorpe. So I'm real close. Our DTM chair this morning, hard at work already trying to recruit next year's class. <laughs> I actually, I see a few other faces in the room that uh, I can point you towards you. I'll, I'll connect with you offline, let you know which of these people to reach out to in a little bit. Actually, I'll throw <laughs> one of them on the bus. He's in my club. P Peter Palmer there, I know is. Peter, how close are you? I am waiting for the processing right now at Toastmasters for the DTM. He's, he's done. We're just waiting for the dates to finalize. Dr. Smith, always a pleasure listening to you. I truly enjoy having you in the Toastmasters world. Do we have any other questions for Marlene this morning? No questions, just a comment. This is um, President-elect of Sensor Toast, where Marlene is actually a member of our club. And I just want to thank Marlene for these moments of education. I definitely plan to incorporate them into Sensor Toast. I think it's an excellent opportunity to teach these educational moments because a lot of times there are points that we need to make or different skills that we need to teach that we don't always get that opportunity during the course of the meeting. So again, an excellent uh, presentation, Marlene, an excellent opportunity to teach advanced skills or new skills to the members that are in the club. So thank you. Brandon, may I, may, may I make a comment? This is George Strasnes. George, you've got the floor or the screen, as I should say. Uh, or something. Marlene, your speech was so empowering to me, and you made it so personal because of the attitude I sensed. Most of us don't like to be told. And when a speaker presents the material in a telling fashion versus a sharing fashion, you share it from your heart. You personalize it in such a way that I felt that we are close friends that you were talking to friends. That's just my observation. I don't know if I'm wrong or right, but I, I felt very connected to you in your presentation, so thank you very much. Well, thank you, George, for your comments. That thank you means a lot to me. I'm glad I touched your heart and soul and shared my point of view. It's interesting, how did I learn about this? When I was a moderator, and still am, but it's on hold because it's on ground and live, for a couple of years I traveled around the country about five times a year, and I would see things, and I would watch all of the speakers. One time I was in one city, the same PowerPoint was given. A week later, the same PowerPoint, two different presenters, two different outcomes, two different engagements, and I talked to them, and I got to see. And one of their points of view that, that I've used and just used recently and hopefully used today also 
was to bring in the time and the moment to all speeches, make it what somebody called, Austin told me I made it organic by bringing in what happened that day. And that is something that I learned in watching these speakers. Whichever city we were in, we would say a warm welcome to the residents of X city or Y city or Z city, bringing in what has happened in that city, what is going on in that time and that moment. And that always made everybody feel inclusive and that I was part of it. And that's another tip that I brought today and that I use making things what they call it organic. The reachable, teachable moment. I just learned that yesterday. I learned that yesterday morning at a conference and I used it in my presentation at the end of the conference relating to the morning part. Showing people that yes, I do listen and yes, everybody's important. So thank you, George. I'm glad that I was able to share my stories. Maybe someday they'll be written. That would be another step, but not part of the DTM step. Back to you, Brandon. We do actually have a question from Toastmaster Ricketts. How do you control nervousness during a presentation? We've got just a couple minutes left here. Can you repeat that, Brandon? How do you control nervousness during a presentation? How do I control nervousness? Last year, I had a dream. This is actually true. I dreamt that I had to go across the country. My bags were late. It was, I had to run this medical education program at 5 a.m. And when I opened up the doors, I was in the bottom of an empty Olympic-sized pool. This was my dream. And I woke up in a sweat thinking, oh my God, can I give this talk? And the answer was yes. Since I had that dream, I'm not nervous anymore because I figured if I could talk from the bottom of an empty Olympic sized pool at 5 a.m., I can talk anywhere. So that's a good question. It's hard. It takes a lot of practice and it takes knowing that you will stumble, like Thornton said. Uh, but that's okay, because we all stumble, and we all just want to have a conversation. So just reassure yourself we all stumble, and that's okay. But it just takes practice. Back to you, Brandon. Thank you, Marlene. Good morning. Good morning, Aura. Go ahead. <laughs> I wanted to share my appreciation for this presentation. It is gold and I thank you so much. And I wanted to add to that I am a school psychologist for the past almost 30 years. And the key of my success with the children is that I am an active listening listener. This is what makes me different from other psychologists. I am an active listening with the children. It works like it, it works like magic. And I wanted to say my appreciation to you for, for highlighting that. And I thank you so much. You're welcome. It is a skill that hopefully Toastmasters is teaching us, active listening. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Aura. You're welcome. One last question today. We do have time for one more question. I'd like to thank Marlene for presenting here today. Let's give Marlene another big round of applause this morning, everybody. Thank you, Marlene. For not only giving us a fantastic presentation, but for getting it up at 8 a.m. on a Sunday to do it. Thank you. District 47 and the 70 something people who are on this call right now, thank you. Appreciate your time and service. I have pasted the Google link in the chat window. I'm gonna paste it again in case you missed it. Please complete it now or anytime in the next 24 hours. 
if you want Marlene to get in touch with you, to send you any information or her presentation, you, there's a spot to include your email address in that evaluation. Please put your evalu email address there if you want Marlene to contact you. That's going to be the best way for her to get that information. Our next presentation is in this room, just like almost everything this weekend has been in this room. And it is Samantha Nguanzo on Adapting Fluid Leadership. Adopting Fluid Leadership, it'll be in this room at nine o'clock in just about 10 minutes. Perfect time to get up, stretch your legs, maybe find that second cup of caffeine. And we'll see you in just a few minutes.